So there are certain things on Etsy that used to work years ago, it's not gonna work today. And if you're following old strategies, you're not gonna get sales and actually scale your business properly. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you several new strategies you need to start utilizing right now on your Etsy business that can help you just not start your shop well, but also scale your Etsy business so you can start making daily and consistent sales. I'm sure this all with you coming up next. So welcome back to the video, my friends. You're new here. My name is Jay on this channel. I teach you how to make passive income online by creating and selling your own products. So if you like content like this, then consider subscribing to my channel. Now there's just several things Etsy sellers just got to stop doing because realistically it's not working. And with there being so many new shoppers selling on Etsy, the competition is, yeah, it's high, but that does not mean you cannot be competitive and generate a full-time income. And by utilizing these strategies, I believe these can help you set your shop above the rest of the competition. And the first one is this, you definitely wanna make sure you identify products that are selling extremely well, but that's also in a low competitive space. Now, an easy way to identify if something is actually in a low competitive space, definitely just wanna search up a broad search term. In our case today, we just wanna search up teacher shirt. And then from here, we're able to find some best-selling items where we can actually find some micro niches. Now, you will see the results here is almost a million search results coming up for the search terms teacher shirt. But again, we're not concerned about this competition right now because we want to search broad to find these micro niches. And these micro niches are really hidden in best-selling products. So I go down here and I find different products like this one here. It says, in my teacher era. I wanna open this up and just see some sales data on this. And without even utilizing a tool, I see this best sellers badge, 20 plus people in the cart. And so I know this phrase in my teacher era could be a micro niche that I can actually serve in and start creating designs to fit this particular market. And automatically just looking at this design here, they're already hitting on two trends that I talk about all the time. Number one, I talk about personalization. And I'm talking about just the font style in general, which is the retro trend. So notice here they have the personalized option here, Miss Smith. And of course they have first grade version, just even more personalization, but really bringing in that retro style that we see working you know, everywhere, just not in teacher shirts, but in all shirts in general. And so again, I can go back into the Etsy search bar and instead of me just searching up teacher shirt, now I want to be a little hyper-focused in regards to what type of teacher shirt I am looking for now. And it is utilizing this particular phrase in my teacher era. And I can just simply search this up. And as you see here, the level of competition for this shirt went down to 34,000. Even in this space, based upon the level of demand, I think we can still sell here. But notice how it's not as much as we normally have, just with the broadened term teacher shirt. Again, that had almost a million search results coming up. This one here, about 35,000. And with that being said, we can be even more niche in regards to what type of my teacher era shirt we can focus on. We can just add in here, first grade. And just by adding in that specific grade level, notice how we drop down even further to about 4,000 search results. And again, we can go in here and check the sales data just to determine if this is getting sales. Again, we don't see the best of this badge here, but we do see 20 plus people in the cart. And usually, if you see 20 plus people in the cart with no best sellers badge, it's probably because this item's just released and it has not accumulated enough sale data in the time of, you know, six months or 30 days or 45 days to really take into account if this is a best selling item. That does not mean it's not getting sales. This here proves that this brand new item is generating sales and in a micro niche we just discovered this is something we can sell just not for teachers but really allow this particular search term and this search phrase to be in other niches as well now one easy thing you can do to skyrocket your sales above the rest of the competition is by turning on the option for someone to personalize or customize your product now, I have personally done this in my shop with just under about 30 personalized items. And I'm just here to tell you, it's like a light bulb went off just for my personalized section in general, where people are really interested in items they can personalize themselves. But there's a unique strategy I like to lend to that really helps you break through the rest of the competition. And it's all about identifying best-selling items that do not have personalization offered. So when you're able to combine these two, best-selling designs with a personalized option, 
that's where the money really is. Now with adding personalization products, Printify allows us to actually add this feature to our Etsy listing. And it is extremely easy to set up personalized items in your shop, either be mugs or hats or tote bags or even t-shirts and add personalized names right there in Printify for you to change and then upload and submit to your print on demand provider. Now, if you want to check out Printify on your own, they were so kind to give my audience a discount code for you to get started selling print on demand products and save a couple of dollars every time you get an item purchase. I make sure to leave all the discounts in my description box below for you to check this out and to see if it is best for your print on demand business. The second one is that you definitely want to use keywords that are searchable, but also relatable. That's why I don't teach people how to copy just the title and the tags from other listings because again their search value may be high but the keywords they're using may not even be relatable to your product and so you may have a lot of people clicking on your product but because the keyword is not related to the product being presented that's where you get low conversion rate so you definitely want to make sure that you combine these two things together you want to find keywords that are searchable but also identify keywords that are relatable. Now, an easy way to identify if a keyword is searchable is just simply go to the search bar and, and just let Etsy do its work. So in our case today, we're gonna to stick to our niche, the teacher niche. And as you see here, before I even finish up my phrase, Etsy is already populating for me search terms that people are typing in and related to what I just put in for just one word, teacher. I have teacher shirts here, gifts, teacher shirts, teacher lanyard. And so they're already telling me what people are looking up. But if I go a little bit further here and just hit space, and just put shirt, then you will see here that there's other things that's coming up that I can see people are focused on. For instance, here I have teacher shirts, teacher shirts with pencil, teacher shirts with light bulbs. And again, I have teacher shirts with birds, teacher shirts with elephants and piggy. You may feel like these search terms are like out of the loop here, but these are actually what Etsy is telling us people are typing in. If I hit space bar again and just play the ABC game, what I mean by that, just putting A after the search term and seeing what's popping up, then we see exactly what people are typing in. Again, I put B here, see what's being typed up. And again, I see people are searching up teacher shirt, be kind. I put C and see what's being typed up. And I see teacher, teacher shirt comfort colors. And I just continue with the alphabet. And as you can see here, we have different things coming up. Up that can let me know what type of shirts I need to create. So number one, we just identified what is searchable. I see this one here, teacher shirt F, but it's giving me teacher shirt flowers garden, teacher shirt funny, teacher shirt for librarians and specials, teacher shirt uh, grade preppy. Again, all these things are different search terms we can identify from the search bar what people are typing in. Now, for instance here, I can just search this up, teacher shirt flowers and garden or teacher shirt flowers garden. And again, as you see here, what is being visible is also what is relatable. So notice how we don't have any hearts showing up or any koala bear showing up or any animal lover teacher shirts showing up. Everything that's visible is exactly what is relatable to the search result. So this is what I mean by you don't want to just search up by a broadened term like teacher shirt and see what is selling well and then copy that, you know, and that entire listing title and not think about, well, what is actually being reflected for the design? Because if I'm just copying titles without necessarily making sure those titles are relevant and relatable to my listing, then I'm not going to get any conversions. Now, if they are relatable and relevant to my listing, sure, it's great to pull some great keywords from their titles and tags that I can pull over to my design. But copying the entire title for what it is word for word and not being mindful of my design, I think is a big error that most new Etsy sellers are actually making. So in regards to this, say if I am creating a teacher shirt that has a flower on it, I see there are several things that that's doing well. And I like to take the first four listings and actually pull out four of the top listings into their own uh, taskbar. And the reason for that is that when I open up all of them, and I just do two for us today as an example, I'm able to see exactly what keywords they're using in the beginning of their title. Now, again, I don't want to copy the entire thing. Just in my time of selling on Etsy, it seems Seems like Etsy ranks people a little bit differently based upon the exact title word for word. Again, that just, just might just be my impression of it. I may be wrong, but that's just my experience that when people copy the title word for word, the algorithm is going to place the one that's doing well first in the search results as opposed to just allowing them to sit next to each other. So what I do to combat that 
is I try to merge different keywords from different listings. Again, I would typically have four listings up. Today, I'm just gonna have two as a way of example. So I like to look at the first line of the listing. The reason for that is number one, Etsy put a lot of SEO rank on this. And number two, this is where I'm really gonna be extremely relevant to what my product is and what people are typing up. So notice we had our phrase here, teacher shirt flower garden. And so as you see here, we have wildflower teacher shirt, daisy teacher shirt, all this is relevant to what this search term is, teacher shirt, flower garden. Same thing here, wildflower kindergarten teacher shirt. And again, now it just gets broad as it goes down a little bit further. Automatically, I see that probably a better search term to go for will be wildflowers kindergarten shirt, wildflower first grade shirt, because I see that's being represented in both of these listings that are best selling products. So from here, instead of me just copying the whole thing, I like to go in here and say, okay, how can I make a shirt that's relevant and relatable to this, but also utilize some additional keywords so yes i would take wildflower teacher shirt but i noticed this one here is a little bit more focused on the specific grade level so then i might say hey how can i create a wildflower t-shirt for a different grade level that may not have this design okay so now i take some inspiration from the title to bring into my listing now I go here a little bit further and it has some general terms that I think is okay to take. But again, I wanna make sure I'm using things that's tied to my product. Again, as I go here, I have to determine what well, is my product a personalized item? Again, if it is a personalized item, great. But if it's not, then it's probably not good to have that in my listing. The reason for that is that if somebody's searching up a wildflower first grade personalized shirt and my shirt is not offering personalization, I might get the click, but I don't get the conversion. So I need to make sure that that whatever I am using is searchable, relatable, so I can be visible to the right person and actually get the purchase. And the next one is this, contrary to popular belief, t-shirts is not the only thing you can sell on Etsy. There are other great high potential products you can sell that can still give you the same level of sale results with less competition. And these three products I believe are great when we're coming up to the fourth quarter season. And that is mugs, tumblers, and ornaments. So if you're having a tough time selling t-shirts, then I want you to explore these other areas because again, these can bring you just as many sales in fourth quarter like t-shirts can do for you as well. Now, the cool thing about using Printify is that they have a ton of different print on demand products you can sell. And again, typically we talk about t-shirts because it's very easy for people to get started if you're new, but uh, you can also sell other products that can be just as helpful and just as easy. And again, as you can see here, we have a ton of things we can sell. They have mugs here. We can go down a little bit further and we can find tumblers. And of course, they also give us the option to sell ornaments as well. And the same process we would take in regards to selling a t-shirt we will take the same process in regards to selling a mug again we'll find a product that we want to sell here we can open this up and find a print on demand provider and we're going to go with district photo as they are the only ones that carry this specific product here we can click start designing and now we have that same type of layout we can upload our design to sell here on the product and we're simply going to go in here and upload a design from our computer and we have that design here and i like to keep this design in one area and duplicate this over to the other side and i head over to preview and i can see exactly how this mug will be printed out and and as you can see, it is just that easy for you to create different type of designs to sell on mugs. And the same process is what we can do for other type of products as well. Again, we can do the same thing for ornaments, the same thing for tumblers, and the same thing for all other print on demand products we see on Printify. And again, this connects straight to Etsy. That means whatever we upload here for our design, we can sync over to our Etsy shop so that if somebody purchased this, Printify would do all the shipping, printing, and sending out of our product to give to our customer. So I believe utilizing these strategies is going to help you start and scale your Etsy business in this year. In what so many people coming on Etsy and trying to sell different types of products, you definitely got to come in with a strategy that is proven to get results. And these are actually the very things I'm doing to help me get daily consistent sales on my Etsy shop. Now in today's video, I didn't have time to talk about how to start an Etsy pro demand business from start to finish. However, if you want to check out that video, you can click right here. And if you want to learn more about how to make income online, make sure you subscribe to my channel here. As always, my friends, my name is Jay, and I will see you in the next video.